All right, here we go. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Kate Edwards. I'm the executive director of the Global Game Jam, and I'd like to welcome you to the closing ceremony of the Cultural Heritage Game Jam. We are coming to you live from the USA Pavilion here at the Dubai World Expo in Dubai. And uh, it's been a fantastic experience so far, and it's really honored to be able to do it right here from the USA Pavilion. Um, so as we get started here, um, we're going to just give you a little insight into why this jam happened and, and who we are and, and basically walk you through the whole process and, and of course tell you about who actually won the jam this year. So um, a little bit about the Global Game Jam, just for those of you who are curious, because you may not have heard of this organization. We are a nonprofit based in the United States. Um, we came into existence in 2008, and as an educational opportunity, we wanted to teach people how to create games and how to you know, basically collaborate with one another and partner with one another and just basically learn the joy of game creation. Um, so our mission is pretty clear. We basically aim to empower individuals worldwide to learn, experiment, and create together through the medium of games. And for those of you who may be wondering, you know, why this emphasis on games, well, it does happen to be the fastest growing form of entertainment on Earth. Um, since that time, in 2008, we went on in 2013 to become uh, the Guinness World Record holder for the largest game creation event. As you can see, we had almost 17,000 jammers in 63 countries back then in 2013, but since that time, the event has grown much, much bigger. So in 2020, the last live jam we did before the pandemic, we actually hit 49,000 jammers at 935 live sites around the world in 118 countries, and we produced over 9,600 games in a 48-hour period. That's pretty amazing. So our mission then is to basically invite people from any background, anyone who's just curious about game creation, um, whether or not they have any skills, that's the whole point. You come as you are and learn with each other and grow in this, in this area. And for a lot of people in the game industry today, they can point back to the Global Game Jam as being the place where they started their careers. And that, of course, makes us very happy because that's really part of the point of why this organization exists. Now, part of what we do as an organization, one of the things where we have the great pleasure to do is partner with other uh, organizations out there on very specific game jam themes around all kinds of different things, whether it could be a specific technology or social issue or other kinds of issues, because game jams are a great, great way to explore that theme through the medium of games and see what people come up with, because oftentimes you will get new insights or find new solutions you never thought about because it was put into the form of a game. So to that end, um, we, we, the Global Game Jam, we partnered with the U.S. Department of State um, to create this Cultural Heritage Game Jam, and so it's my pleasure to uh, pass the podium over to um, Eric Tolfamo, who's the director of the Col Cultural Heritage Center at the U.S. Department of State, to uh, provide some opening remarks from their perspective. Thanks very much, Kate. Um, good afternoon to our visitors here at Expo 2020 in Dubai, and a special warm welcome to those of you joining this event virtually from around the world. Uh, my name is Eric Telfamo. I'm the director of the United States Department of State's Cultural Heritage Center. Our Cultural Heritage Center has a unique mission that we conduct on behalf of the US government and the American people, but for the benefit of people throughout the world. At the Cultural Heritage Center, we work with international partners, with cultural heritage professionals, and engage communities worldwide to protect and preserve cultural heritage in all of its diversity. We share U.S. expertise by fostering connections between our cultural heritage professionals and institutions, as well as their international counterparts. We support preservation efforts to protect cultural heritage from the impact of deterioration, natural disasters, and other causes through the U.S. Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. And we protect heritage from theft, looting, trafficking, and destruction through constant collaboration with partner governments and customs and law enforcement officials. So while the United States Cultural Heritage Center's efforts are quintessentially international in their nature, our work is also very keenly focused on the unique characteristics of the culturally significant monuments, sites, and intangible heritage practices that we seek to protect and preserve. 
I can't think of a better venue to share this cultural heritage journey than the unique global stage of Expo 2020. And our venue right here today, the USA Pavilion, which showcases American ingenuity under the theme of life, liberty, and the pursuit of the future. The innovative global initiative of the Cultural Heritage Game Jam invited individuals and teams of gamers to exchange ideas, ask tough questions, and develop prototype games that help raise awareness of cultural heritage protection for new audiences. By expanding the circle of awareness of this issue, those of us who work to preserve cultural heritage, whether we're from the government, civil society, or individuals, can gain new allies in the shared responsibility of safeguarding the artifacts, the monuments, and the practices of the past. I'm really proud to say that the Cultural Heritage Game Jam greatly exceeded our expectations by attracting over 850 participants from more than 70 countries around the world. And we're very excited about the potential that the new games that were created for this Game Jam has to reach more people, spark new ideas, and inspire action to protect and preserve cultural heritage. So on behalf of the United States Department of State's Cultural Heritage Center, I'd like to thank our hosts here at the USA Pavilion, uh, recognize the efforts of all of the Game Jam's really outstanding participants, and congratulate the winners, who we are looking forward to announcing in just a few moments. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Eric. And now, um, also from the same department, I'd like to introduce Catherine Foster, who's the Program Director of the Cultural Antiquities Task Force in the Cultural Heritage Center at the U.S. Department of State. Thank you so much, Kate. And it's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be here with all of you and um, those of you who are tuning in for the, um, tuning in from their homes. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, as Kate said, my name is Catherine Foster, and I'm the Program Director for the Cultural Antiquities Task Force, which is an interagency group administered by the U.S. Department of State's Cultural Heritage Center. Since 2004, the task force has coordinated with federal law enforcement agencies, foreign partners, and Interpol to disrupt looting, stealing, damaging, and trafficking of cultural heritage at risk. Cultural heritage is under threat around the world from many causes, perhaps the greatest being pillage of archaeological sites and historical monuments. Often the work of middlemen and national or transnational organized criminal syndicates, including terrorists, looted objects are exported illegally from the country of origin and sold on the black or gray markets to dealers and collectors in Europe, the United States, and increasingly the Gulf states and China. Through pillage, objects are hastily and unscientifically removed from their archaeological context, sometimes destroying whole sites in the process. And this deprives scholars of vital information for understanding past societies. Often the looted and trafficked objects find their way into closed door sales and private collections never to be seen again. The trafficking of stolen, looted, and forged art, antiquities, and other cultural objects benefits organized crime, erodes the legal art market, and harms our relationships with foreign partners and allies. This trafficking and subsequent loss of cultural heritage also contribute to the breakdown of social identity, coexistence, and economic livelihoods that are tied to the heritage tourism sector. Oops. The task force and our six federal agencies, including the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice, work to disrupt illicit trafficking of cultural heritage by promoting close law enforcement coordination, training, and building the capacity of foreign law enforcement and heritage managers to protect and preserve sites and objects. We also support initiatives for site security, inventories for at-risk sites and museum collections, 
and sustainable livelihoods as alternatives to looting and trafficking. And we collaborate with partners on public education and outreach as crime prevention. And this is where the game jam comes in. The task force really wanted to utilize the popular and powerful medium of games to raise awareness about threats to cultural heritage, to build understanding about the importance of cultural heritage within communities, to foster cross-disciplinary collaboration and dialogue around cultural heritage protection, and finally, to develop new and innovative tools and solutions to combat cultural property trafficking and destruction. And boy, were we overwhelmed with the response to this game jam. Let's take a look at a small sample of some of the games that were created for the jam. And just uh, before we show this trailer, just want to point out to people that you can go to itch.io where all the games are available for anybody to check out and play. If you just search, either use this link or search on Cultural Heritage Game Jam on itch.io and you will find the games. But let's take a look at the games.
Yeah, I would say that's pretty amazing. I mean, the, the thing that really strikes me about the, the amount of games that we got, not just the amount of games, but the incredible breadth that we received um, from so many different cultures, so many different locations around the world. Um, and I mean, I've, I've been running the Gold Bowl Game Jam for a while. I'm used to seeing that kind of variety, but even for doing an event of this kind of special narrow theme, um, the amount of uh, diversity that we saw in the games was just amazing. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about that. Yeah, I, I was really struck too by how many teams were from different countries. Um, so multi-country teams that yeah, really shows how much like cultural heritage can resonate, um, not just within your local community, but also with you know, like-minded individuals across the, the globe. So it was really neat to see that aspect mm. of, the, of the jam. You know, we saw in the, the games that are just highlighted here in this reel, but in so many of the other submissions, that the, the teams that worked on these really got to know the issues. You know, we, we're experts in this field, but we were so impressed that the amount of research that went into it um, and the quality of the images and the graphics to help make cultural heritage relatable to, um, to game lovers and game players anywhere around the world. It's a great job. Yeah, it's just, it's very impressive. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, continue on, with starting with some special recognition. So basically, what is this about? Well, when we did the judging process, we had a panel of judges um, that were a mix of people from the game industry as well as from uh, the, the Cultural Heritage Center at the Department of State. And so th that group combined were using several factors to determine who they felt that, you know, basically built the games that most aligned with the goals of this jam. So these were the various categories that they were looking at. And so what we'd like to do is call out specific games from the jam that we felt did particularly well in each of these areas. And this is basically a form of uh, honorable mention or special recognition. It's, these are not prize winning, but we felt that it was really important to point out that there's some games that did really, really well in these areas. So let's start with the education design principles. Okay. So for this category, the judges looked at whether the game supports increases in knowledge and motivates behavioral change around the topics and themes of the game jam, which were protection and preservation of cultural heritage. And in the category of education design principles, we are pleased to recognize the game Smart Detective by Bao Bao in the United States and Italy for bringing conservation practices and art literacy to a wider audience through games. Congratulations. Great. Then the next one is uh, the category of innovation. Yeah, for, for innovation, for this category, the judges examined how creative the game's approach was to engaging the player around the topics of cultural heritage, protection, and preservation. So for innovation, we would like to recognize the board game Involved by Alex Babunska in Bulgaria for its innovative approach to bringing all the stakeholders to the literal table, it's a board game, uh, to preserve historic urban districts. Great, and the next category about engaging design, this is essentially game, this is where the, the real gameplay part comes in. Like, did they create a game that is really draws you in as a player? Does it use good game design principles? Does it, you know, not only a, a lot of the fundamentals that are out there that a lot of good games are based on, but, you know, how well does it grab you as a player? Is this the kind of game that you would like to continue to play and, and, and increase that engagement? So that's really what we were looking at this category. And so the game we'd like to recognize in this is the game SIG from Algeria. We thought that this uh, mobile game um, that's based on Android, did a particularly good job with this, um, especially taking a game that is, is, is very old, uh, very ancient to their culture, and updating it in the form of a mobile game. And they did it in such a great way. Um, it makes it very playable. Of course, being on a mobile device, it also makes it very accessible to a lot of people. So they did a really great job with this. And then our next category is accessible design. Okay, so when it comes to accessible design, of course, it's really... Um, important that people will pick up their phones or their consoles um, or go to the board game and, and actually play the game. So uh, for this category, the judges looked at how easy it is to start playing. And we would like to recognize the game I Apeek by Trucks2099 in Peru for its approachability and the ease uh, with which a player is able to just get into the action and play right through the game. Felicidades. 
And then the next category is art. Yeah, for this category, the judges scored on how well the art was designed and executed in the game, and whether the art keeps with the genre of the game. So we are pleased to recognize Valorium by Team Sparks in Turkey, whose Art Deco design was inspired by the look and feel of games like Bioshock, the movies, and the early period of archaeological discovery. Excellent. And then our final category was audio. So, um, of course, games are, uh, there, there's always an audio design, a lot of sounds and sound effects and music that goes into them, as you can see from some of the examples we showed. And uh, we felt that the game that did particularly well with its audio design this time was the game Purun Machu. Um, besides the really, really cool visual design, they did a great job with the ambient noise, the ambient kind of environmental sounds that you, that you have when you're going through this game that really kind of brought the environment to life in a really special way. So we wanted to highlight uh, this game for that. So beyond the special recognition, now we would like to move to actually announcing the top finalists. So basically, when we had the judging panel, um, they went through these six criteria that we just described, and they determined, um, based on a lot of conversations, uh, a lot of healthy debates about which games we felt were um, going to be the top finalists. And so these are the games that actually placed for prizes that were associated with um, the, this particular game jam. So, um, so all of these games that you'll see are games that have been awarded um, for their great work during the jam. So we'd like to start with the fourth runner-up for the finalist, um, which is the game Siamese. Perfect, yes. So congratulations to the team Daydev in Thailand on winning fourth runner-up for your game Puzzle Heritage Game. Excellent. And then our fourth runner, or excuse me, the third runner-up. Yeah, our third runner-up is Involved by Alex Babunska from Bulgaria. Congratulations. Yeah, this is very cool. For people who may not realize, this is actually an analog game, or as, as we call them, a board game, um, which was also very welcome as part of the game jam. That's one of the things you often see during the game jam. Not all the games created are actually digital. A lot of times people will create actual... Um, you know, board games and live games. The second runner-up goes to uh, Ayapeak, <laughs> excuse me, from Peru. Um, this game did a fantastic job with its design, um, really fun to play, uh, in all, it was very engaging in many ways, so congratulations. And then the first runner-up. Okay, we're, we're getting closer. Uh, I hope the tension is, uh, is building for all of our, <laughs> our virtual guests, just like it is here in the room. But uh, we're really happy to announce uh, the first runner-up in the Cultural Heritage Game Jam is Smart Detective by Bao Bao uh, from a team based in the United States and Italy. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. And then the top prize goes to... Yeah, I am very yes. honored to announce, yeah, our grand prize winner, Purin Machu by Lingua Code in Peru. Brazil, Sweden, and Iran. Congratulations, you are the grand prize winner of the Cultural Heritage Game Jam. Woohoo! Woo! Congratulations, does excellent work. Yeah, I mean, all of the games were amazing, but this one really stood out to the judging panel. I, I thought it's just an exceptional piece of work. Um, so let's hear a message actually from the team that, um, that did win the jam, so. I have to get back to the desktop. One moment, please. Uh, let's see, here we go. Hello everyone, on behalf of the whole Purumacho team, we are really honored to receive this award uh, for, the world, for the Dubai World Expo. Uh, we have to thank, especially, uh, Maria Kelly Albornoz, who helped us with the investigation from, for the Chachapoyas culture. We would like to highlight our multicultural team with developers from Sweden, Peru, and Iran. It's the mix of our viewpoints that enriches our game. We hope we can develop our game and deliver the main message of protecting cultural heritage to all players. Your comments motivate us.
Gracias. 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 Right, there we go. So congratulations again to that team and um, to all the winners, um, the, all, all the finalists, and actually all the participants. I think everybody did just a, such a overwhelming job, I think, to go back to your original comments. We were just kind of overblown by the diversity of the games and by the variety of the games, just the amount of participation for a topic that you never really know how much engagement you're gonna get. Uh, I think, uh... I want to say for the Department of State, really thank you to everybody out there, the teams around the world, and special congratulations, of course, uh, to the team that produced uh, Purumachu, and, and a real thanks to GGJ, to Global Game Jam, uh, for being such outstanding partners um, with the State Department on this project. Thank you. Yeah, and, e and echoing Eric, yeah, thank you so much to, um, to GGJ and to all the jammers who participated in the Cultural Heritage Game Jam. You know, your games have not only inspired us, but countless others around the world who now have this newfound appreciation for cultural heritage, for the threats that it faces from looting and trafficking, and most importantly, this positive role that games can play in this effort to protect and preserve heritage. So thank you so much, and it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, and thank you again. Uh, fantastic partners to work with. I mean, we work with a lot of organizations and it's just been, it's been so much fun. And it's a, it's a topic that I'm just really happy to see in our community. It's just people just really attach themselves to this in a big way. And um, so on that note, if you're interested about jamming, you know, this is not the end. This is a particular event that we did, but the Global Game Jam, the big event, <coughs> pardon me, that we do every January is coming up in just about a, six, five weeks or so. <coughs> pardon me. So, um, if you're interested in participating in the Global Game Jam, you can go to gl globalgamejam.org and sign up to be a jammer. There's sites sprouting up all over the world, so uh, get involved if you're curious. And don't worry about, you know, if you feel you don't have the skill level, that's okay. A lot of the people who are involved in the games you saw today, not everyone is a professional. You know, there's all different kinds of skill levels, so it's something we encourage you to do. So, thank you again. And that concludes our ceremony.